Hello and welcome to another video. This is our April 2018 BMW 440i M Sport with the Auto ZF gearbox. This car's covered just 17,000, I think, in 21 miles uh, with two owners from new. The car has full main dealer service history. It's finished in estral blue metallic and the car has a huge amount of spec on it. Um, very hard to find these cars with a nice spec on at the moment and uh, especially with very low mileage as well. So I'm going to take you around the car and point out if there's any little chips or anything like that. The whole car has been detailed and machine polished to a very high level. You can tell from the reflection that we're getting from the very bright lights we've got in the showroom, just how nice the car's come up. And we've also added some black gloss grills to the front. So I'm just gonna take you in and show you the bonnet. Now I'm gonna have, a, as I'm scanning across here, I'm looking to see if I can see any little chips, but it's all really clean. I can't really see, there's a tiny, don't even think it's going to show in the video. I can't really find it. There's a pinprick of a chip there. But there is nothing up here either. It's in really beautiful condition. Let's just check that we're focused. There we go. You can see that beautiful shine that we've achieved on the bonnet there. And you can see from the windscreen as well. It's not peppered, it's very low mileage obviously, so there's no peppering to the windscreen. We've got the heads up display, we've got uh, high beam assist, the connective drive camera up on the top here. Because this car is, um, is fitted with these really nice adaptive, let's get it in focus, adaptive LED icon lights. So basically these lights will move with the steering wheel in the direction of travel and light up the road in front of you. And they've got a different uh, lens around the outside there, slightly different shape and a different texture on the highlighted bits that you can see, the day running lights you can see there. We've got front and rear parking sensors. We've also got park assist. You can see the parking sensor on the side so the car will self park. If we look down at the bumper here, try and keep my hands steady as I can. It's not got any pitting on the front bumper. These are all the areas to check for. You can see all along the top here, no nasty chips on there. Come round and show you down this side, all the fog lights, all the trims at the front. Nothing on the side there. Let's just come out a bit now. So as I say, we've got the adaptive LED icon lights. The car has the dynamic handling package. Now that, what, what that consists of is the variable sport steering opposed to the servotronic steering. So the steering, um, there's a valve on the steering rack and it adjusts the amount of turns, I believe. I've, I did read up on it the amount of uh, tur turns for a full lock. And so it makes the steering a bit more direct when you put it into sport mode. And the adaptive M Sport suspension that the car has fitted will adjust depending whether you've got it in Eco Pro or Comfort and it will be softer. So there's a valve on the shock absorbers and it can regulate how much fluid is that side of the shock absorber and when you want it in sport it will stiffen the shock absorber to give a more direct uh, feel to the handling of the car for cornering etc so you can have the best of both worlds comfort and sport it's got the 19 inch 7, 704m alloy wheels with the orbit grey and diamond cut face we've got the M sport brakes in there as well the blue calipers we look down the side of this car, you can see how true the panels are. There's no damage, no scuffing on the wing mirrors. I've come up onto the roof. 
There are two very, very minor little dot chips that we haven't touched in yet. We're gonna do that uh, once our new touch-up comes in tomorrow. Obviously, as the touch-ups, uh, the little pots that we get, they dry out eventually, and then when they get a bit tacky, we have to replace them, so we're gonna replace that. But it's, uh, we're talking about that. So not a lot. <laughs> We've got the sun protection glass at the back. If we look across the boot lid as well. No scratches, any little light scratches, the machine polishing takes care of that. And we don't just run a machine polisher over the top and just expect it to be shiny. The guys spend, two people spend a good day at least on a car, meticulously doing each panel, cleaning them, cleaning the alloys right to the way to the back. All the cars get the same treatment. You'll notice down here, if we look at the rear bumper, how beautiful the tailpipes have come up. I'm just gonna try and zoom in. All polishing, see the reflection back onto the bumper there. And the same for the other side. All in lovely condition. Got rear camera as well, just up under there. LED rear lights. Let's bring you onto the top here. In fact, let's just open the, the boot for a second. There we go. All of this has been machine polished. No damage on there. We've got the split folding rear seats. We've got extended storage, the netting, and then underneath, you can see how clean the carpets are as well. We've got the net you can put across, all lovely and clean under there. Toolkit. Really clean up here. You can see how meticulously, that's just where the rubber sits on the glass, that bit there. All nice all the way around. We'll pop that down to just show you. Got the rear camera there. And when the rear camera comes on, you've also got uh, guidelines as well. And little blocks that show you any obstacles that uh, you may hit. All around the filler cap, no damage. Oh, just drop my piece of paper with all the spec on. Car will run on E10 fuel. And how far did that go under the car? Not too far, there we go. So the rear wheel, again, all in lovely condition. And if we take a look down the door edge, there was a tiny little bit here, very minor, we just touched in. The car has comfort access as well. So with the key in my pocket, you'll notice the rib effect on the top here. Car locks, put your hand inside and it unlocks. I'll just show you that again. Lock, hand in, unlocks. Show you the mirror on this side as well. No ding dents or anything. And then driver's side wheel, all in lovely condition. But what we'll do, I think we'll uh, pop the bonnet and do that first. So two pulls to release the bonnet. see the engine bay is all done by hand first of all they'll take these covers off take out any leaves hoover them out you don't want to be putting a jet wash in there and obliterating all the leaves because you'll just block up all the waterways see how clean you know this engine hasn't done a lot of mileage at all
So this is the twin power turbo. So they all actually have the same name on the top, but with the 435 diesel, it's a twin turbo, i.e. two turbos. But most of the BMWs are a twin power turbo. So it's a twin scroll turbo. That means it has two in inlet inlets into the turbo, splitting up the cylinders, the gases from the cylinders that into the turbo and it makes it more responsive and uh, gives you more power quickly with less lag better for fuel economy as well if you google twin scroll turbos uh, it's always quite interesting to see the benefits of new technology it's been around for quite some time obviously but uh, you can see just up there just how clean it is now these cars are rated about 426 horsepower by BMW. They generally make a bit more on a, a rolling road. And a, a Celtic remap that uh, we can have uh, mapped onto the car will take this over 400 brake horsepower. I can't remember it, the exact figure, but uh, I think it's around about 421 or something like that. Maybe a bit more, 431. So you can really push the power up. And of course, you've got the ZF gearbox, which is a really strong gearbox. So it can handle all of that as well. Always worth noting when the bonnets come down, just let them drop gently down and let them fall down and they'll, they'll uh, clip in nicely into place. So we don't want to lower them down and then push on the bonnet because that will dent the bonnet. So as you can see, really, really come up nice. Let's take a look. So we've got the um, LED lights as well, just under the handles there. And if we open up the door, all down this door edge, again, already nice. And we've got puddle lights under there. If we look at the door card, we've got the Estral Blue. I think it's still called Estral Blue, actually. The finisher in there. We've got the Harman Kardon sound system. I think it's about generally about 16 speakers. There's two in that door card. There's more under the seat. There's another speaker up in front of the professional media in the car, and more up, uh, sorry, more in the, the back. If I can zoom in, you can see the speakers in the back there. But there's uh, plenty of uh, speakers for the sound system and uh, nice clarity from the sound system as well. Now we also have uh, electric seats with electric bolster, which is the rocker button at the back there. That inflates the sides here to hold you in the seat. This has got the exclusive blue stitching with the black leather. And then you've got the electric button to move the seat forward. We put the seat forward, take a look in the back, we've got the center armrest there no damage on those leather seats in the back no scratches or anything and if i can get in there no damage on the rear vents and also the back of the seats sometimes these can be badly scored or damaged from when they have when people put the seats down things come forward and dig into the seats but this is all in really nice condition and put that back this button here is for releasing the headrest back. I'll show you more with the front. In fact, on the seal down here, you can see that it's still got the protective covering on there. We were gonna take them off a minute ago and then we thought, well, we'll let the next owner do that if they wish to take them off because they might wanna keep them on there. So those little marks on there is just from the, the blue plastic. But if you wanted those taken off when you purchase the car, that's not a problem. Okay, so we've looked in the boot. Let's have a look in the driver's side. Let's turn these lights off for a second. So driver's door card. No damage there. No dig marks or anything 
in the door card that I can find. All lovely and clean under here, look. And again, the door shuts. Again, with the protective cover still on there. And all of the rubbers. Not perished at all. So we've got folding anti-dazzle mirrors. So you can, okay, so the car's been turned off for too long. So I'll tell you what we'll do. Get this back in focus. If we press and hold the lock button, see the mirrors both fold in. Unlock the car, they fold out. Also works off of this button here. I don't know if it's gonna work now. Oh yeah, it will, because we've just alerted the car that we're still here. So on the driver's side, we've got the electric seat with the memory. So we've got two memory settings. They'll also memorize the wing mirror position. Driver's seat, just wanna show you the bolsters there. No damage. I'll just show you the back of that seat as well. I'll show you from this side as well. So you can see the door card on the other side. Okay. So we did, let's move the seat back a little bit. Now, the other thing I was gonna mention, uh, I'm sure people do know about this, but depending which side you leave the, the left and right position for the mirrors will dictate whether the car, sorry, whether the, uh, when you go into reverse, the near side mirror will dip. So if you want it to dip, you leave it one side. If you don't, you leave it the other side. I'm gonna start the car. Wait for everything to come up and clear itself. There we go. Now just down here, you'll notice we've got driving assistant. So you've got two buttons there. So one is for collision warning, collision alert, and pedestrian alert. And you can configure the warning point either early or late. We'll leave it on early actually. And, oh, let's just go back in there. It's quicker to do it this way. Pedestrian alert is a warning and brake intervention during the day if someone was to come out from the side in front of the car when you're moving, basically. And then the other button is for a lane departure warning. And you'll also get this little light come up in the bottom corner there so the steering wheel will basically vibrate if you go over the white line you can see the mileage at the bottom there 17,021 you may have also noticed we've got digital cockpit which is really nice because all of the later cars have this as standard or most of them uh, so when we go into a different drive mode using this button down here. This also adjusts the steering and the suspension. So we're going to, we're in comfort. We're going to Com uh, Eco Pro. And you can see that the display has changed to show you the economy of the vehicle. And down at the bottom in the center, you can see the extra mileage that you're gonna gain being in this mode. So it's on zero at the moment because we're not going anywhere. So I'm just gonna bring this display up onto here. Now if we go into Eco Pro here, you can see down here it's at 92% at a speed of 75 mile an hour. If you drop that down to say 60, you're now running at 97%. And you can have the climate control and economy setting. You can see it adjusts the power of the air conditioning. So you can just have it like trickling for economy. And then the coasting, You'll notice this is dry, I've turned it off, it's gone down to 87%. With coasting on, you lose much of the engine braking, and when you come off the throttle, 
rather than getting that sort of engine braking that you usually get, it'll just coast, i.e. coasting. And so you can come off the throttle a lot earlier as you're coming up to a junction and just sort of coast up to it and that way you're saving fuel. So pretty clever. Comfort is a balanced setting of everything. So for just normal daily use and we've gone back into the normal mode over here. If we go into sport, you can see the sport displays, I'll just show you that again over here. This has changed yet again. We've got the gear shift on the right where it says P for park, the speed on the left, it's all changed red for a nice sporty look. And uh, the suspension in this mode, depending what setting you've got it on, I'll show you what I mean. Because you can configure it to do drive chain and chassis or one or the other. Drive chain being the power source, chassis obviously the shock absorbers. So if you've got both on, basically in sport, it will sharpen up the, the throttle response, uh, give you, you know, a bit more power and uh, the suspension will stiffen up. Obviously, when you go into the reversing and economy, the throttle feels a bit flat. It, it's set up, the ECU changes to set up for um, a more leaner burning, um, you know, more leaner burning, let's leave it at that. After you've done a few videos in one day, it all becomes a bit too much sometimes, doesn't it, Scott? That's right. <laughs> and Sport Plus will uh, take off part of the traction control, which you can see from the little orange light at the top that turns off what they call DTC, dynamic traction control. Now, in the dry, if you really wanna test the car out, see the traction control button there, it says off on it. If I press, oh, let's get this in focus. If I press and hold that, can you see we've now got DSC off as well? So that's dynamic stability control. I think basically one is more forward moving uh, for traction and the other one is more lateral side movements. You know, if you're gonna slide sideways and it'll catch you. So with all of it off, because when these, when these um, drive raids come in, they restrict the amount of fuel going to the engine. So you can turn it all off and give it full power if you want to, you know, in the right conditions, of course. Uh, you've got dual climate control, as you can see. Heated seats, both sides, free stage. Got the USB down at the front there. I think that's because this car is also fitted with the Wi-Fi hotspot. And I'm just going to show you. We've got oops, wireless charging under here. Another USB port, so you can charge your Bluetooth phone there. Just under the glove box, there is another 12 volt um, plug as well. All the books are in here. We've got another 12 volt, obviously it's a non-smoking car, so there's no cigarette lighter in there. Cup holders. And then if we come up onto the top here, this is all touch screen, so you can actually move these wherever you want them. For the benefit of the video, I will use the iDrive wheel, address input. We can either press down and do voice input or we can run our finger on the top of the iDrive wheel, just here. I'll put in our postcode. Three. Now when you want to do a space, one side to the other like so. Space. Five. Why? It's quite forgiving with your writing as well most of the time and if you're not left-handed you'll soon get the grip of it. Click down on there, there we go, route guidance and we're obviously already there. Now, if you want to go in and change or turn the route, uh, route guidance off, the little checkered flag up there, very simple on the BMWs, stop route guidance. I know on some of the cars over the years to turn these things off was an absolute nightmare if you weren't used to it. So all these sub menus down here, spoken instructions, traffic information, it'll tell you where there's delays and stuff. And uh, additional information, this is where you can have satellite images, changes the display, 
I'll show you in a minute. I'm just going to map views. Uh, always like to point this out because I think it's quite handy. That's looking straight down in direction of travel. Again, you can save these. If you run your finger over those buttons, you can save some of the screens, telephone numbers, dab channels. So if we then save the other map view in here to perspective, save that on number nine, oh, sorry, eight. And then we can just press number seven, look, and it'll change. And if you, you know, you can put your girlfriend, wife, mum on number one to call out and it's all nice and simple. Uh, so let's go back into the menu. If you press, so with these shortcut buttons just down on the iDrive wheel, when you press the button twice, so I pressed it once, press it a second time, it generally does another function, if you like. So it's made all of the um, tiles, as they call them, come up on here. You go into my vehicle, vehicle settings, you can see down on the right, intelligent safety, the parking, automatic. So we've got self parking on here. I'm pretty sure on this one, you just do the throttle and the brake. It may do everything, but I think it's throttle and brake and it does all the steering. You've got your driver profile, so I memorize all of the settings, including the radio stations and everything. So just put one key in the car, come into here with the car set up as you want it, your mirrors and everything. And then, for example, we'll put in here prestige, or we can write like this. Four. Oh, no, we don't. It's not that forgiving. R-E-S-T-I-G-E. -E. There we go. We'll use prestige. So everything in the car at the moment is set to the key that I have in the car with the name Prestige. So you could have, um, you know, you and your partner in there separately and your own key and everything will configure to your favorite stations, your awesome. driving position, wing mirrors, everything. So let's come out of there. I think we might have to go back in this way. Vehicle status. Okay, tire pressures, measure the oil, check control, no faults and then front brake pads this is due to go in to be serviced so we'll take a look at those and it looks like they might need to be changed um, engine oil vehicle check brake fluid rear pads 24,000 so we we have a, a local BMW specialist that we use for all of the vehicles here and any servicing that needs to be done on the car will be done it goes onto the BMW database for the servicing, so it shows on their system, and it also goes into the iDrive in here. So basically this was the pre-delivery check, and this would have been oil, brake fluid, microfilter, vehicle inspection, so I had, had a bigger service. So that, that was back in the lockdown, basically, wasn't it, all just after the lockdown? So we'll have another service that will come up in there and uh, whatever needs to be done will be done, including the brake pads. Okay, I think we've pretty much got, we've got all the books in there as well. We've got the driving assistant. The button for the adaptive lights is this one here. Let's just turn it back into a comfort mode. Now, because it's too light in the showroom, that's not gonna come on, Ooh. but uh, that, when the, the lights are in uh, auto, uh, which they're not, but it is too bright outside. Just press this little button here. You'll get a green uh, picture, just like with the A in it there, of the headlights, and then the light function will all operate. I think we've pretty much covered everything in here with the wireless charge. So we'll jump outside, give it a little bit of a, a rev, bring it out, put it into sport mode actually. Notice in sport mode, you've got more of a burble. It opens up one of the valves. On the exhaust. So basically in comfort mode, 
and uh, economy mode. Only this exhaust on the offside is in use. This one has a valve on it. So when it goes into sport mode or over 3000 revs, that one opens up as well. And that's what gives you that different sound. So thank you for taking the time to watch the video. I'm pretty sure I've covered everything. So it's got the dynamic handling package. I think it's got, ah, oh, we didn't do the heads up display. I, I will just jump back in the car actually and show you that because there was so much on this car. I should have, oh, I can see it now. I know we mentioned it earlier, but this car's got the innovation pack. So you can see the screen here. If I zoom in, you can see the speed. You can see now the DAB channels. And on the left, just below that headlight, you can see like a white uh, circle with a red line around it. That would actually display the speed of the road, but we're off-road at the moment. And then you've got the speed of the car. And this will also show you um, the directions of travel. So if we go into, let's just zoom out again. And go into the settings. So I think it's this one. Displays, heads up and information. So this is all of the information, the speed limit on the road, it will show route uh, ahead for the sat nav, check control, entertainment, telephone, everything. Now when you've got the digital cockpit, most cars don't always have heads up display. So to get both, is really quite nice and if you were in fact if I turn off heads up display turn it off and then I press the mode button we get it all down here music collection if I turn the heads up display on I think with the digital copy it might actually give you both still yeah showing on okay let's get there we go no it's just moved to down there so you can have it on one or the other and I think now it's moved up to, yeah now it's moved back up to here can you see that yeah so it is one or the other okay that's how we get again. So as I was saying, thank you for watching the video. I think we've covered most things, but please give us a call if you've got any questions. It's a really lovely example, this, so I'm sure we won't have it too long. We've got all the finance options um, required for lease purchase, hire purchase. PCP and some fantastic warranty packages uh, that you can take up to four years as well. Take care, speak to you soon. Bye now.